Hello and welcome back to Doodles MD. I'm Falake Lawal, your public health internal medicine infectious diseases physician. This is a show where you get simplified medical information in simple and applicable uh, forms for your daily life. Moving on on the Know Your Body series that we've been doing, we are talking about the urinary system today. So the urinary system consists of the kidneys, and the ureters and we're going to so i want to show you now if you look at this is the human model body and this is where the intestine is this is the liver this is the stomach right in front here and it's showing you where the liver the kidneys are you have to go to the back right the intestines come out of the way the liver comes out of the way and you can see that it is way in the back right and it is very close to our back and so and it has you know there's it's very close also to the major um, blood vessels right here in the back and um, we can see this is just a little piece of it um, the kidneys are generally bean shaped they're generally bean shaped and um, it measures this is a small size though, but it measures about five inches long, which is about 12 centimeters in the average person. And um, they contain uh, what we call nephrons, which is the filtration system. And in each kidney, there are about a million nephrons. Keep in mind that even though you have a lot of them, it's only each kidney functions at about 10% of its capacity. So it has room to just be able to withstand a lot even though of course we know kidney failure happens and um, blood flows through it and the entire blood volume of about five liters flows through the kidney about 40 times a day okay so moving on from that we're going to talk about the functions um, now we're talking about the functions of the kidney the common thing is you know the kidney Oh yeah, it makes urine and that is true. And the formation of urine helps in the removal of waste products of drugs, excess water. The kidneys, not just in removing water, but sometimes they can reabsorb what is filtered. So they, they are very important in the regulation of body water content. Also something that we call osmolality, which is basically the, the ability for the the fluid or the blood to hold um, water. It's called the tonicity. The other thing is also it's important in blood pressure regulation, um, important in electrolyte content regulation because they are filtered, they are reabsorbed. Acid base regulation because the body has to have a certain pH for things to function. If it's too acidic, things start going wrong. If it's too alkaline, things start going wrong. So you have to maintain a delicate balance. The next is activation of vitamin D. You form vitamin D through your system, you get it through food, it goes into the liver, it gets some you know, activation and formation there. But the last step, it has to be activated in the kidneys. Finally, the kidneys outside of filtration produce two different hormones. One of them is responsible for stimulation of red blood cell production. It is called erythropoietin. The other hormone is called renin, which is important in blood pressure regulation through um, the relaxation and contraction of blood vessels. So now we are going to move on and talk about the structure and the process. Welcome back. Again, here is the diaphragm that separates the abdomen, which is the belly space, from the chest space where the lungs are you should have the liver here you should have the spleen here and some other things we already talked about that the kidneys are being shaped so and we have two of them they're in the back they have blood supply the blue is draining blood out into the inferior vena cava and this is going up into the heart and uh, we have the artery that's bringing blood down from the heart and it supplies all parts of the body including the kidneys now the urine from the kidney drains down through what we call the ureter and that is this 
it drains down connects into the bladder the bladder is a muscular pouch that holds urine and it can stretch and sense urine the urine now goes out through the urethra as we can see on this side we can see the bladder here and the urethra in women we can see the bladder here and the urethra in women is shorter while in men this is the bladder and while in men it's much longer this is a really good picture that really shows us the structure of what the kidney is we talked about blood that comes in and blood that goes out and the urine coming out this is the nephron and it is basically the singular unit the smallest unit of a kidney you can see this cup like uh, ball shaped thing is called the glomerulus and this is where the filtration starts so blood comes in the blood vessels divide into smaller um, sizes capillaries that have holes so if you focus on the side that has this brown bulb now you can see the blood vessel that's going in there's a nerve supplying it that sends information on you know how the blood flow is or controls the blood flow and you can see here what looks like um, zigzag is just an illustration of the fenestration that allows for blood to easily just flow out so the control of blood flow in this um, glomeruli is based on size proteins tend to be much larger and they don't um, easily pass through and in certain disease states these um, podocytes these slits would erode off causing the spaces to be bigger and proteins can escape one other thing um, that's good to mention here is just a caveat for those of us that use a lot of NSAIDs as we call them which would be like the ibuprofen which is Motrin, um, naproxen which is Aleve or you're using Dometacin, those who have arthritis and they're using um, Felvin, Voltaren, um, Pyroxicam, they, those medications actually cause a a reduction in size which is what we call vasoconstriction because a reduction in size of the blood vessel that takes blood into the kidneys essentially starving your kidneys of blood they reduce blood flow which means there's reduced oxygen there's reduced filtration so you know you a lot of you're not making a lot of urine immediately because you're not filtering a lot of water um, you're not getting enough oxygen into the core parts of your kidney so if you, you are using very high doses for a long time you are chronically causing your kidneys to be deprived and these can cause can predispose to renal failure taking a closer look at this um, nephron and filtration system you can see what is there's the short one and there's the one that has the long loop and this is important because in when your body is needing to either get rid or retrieve more things right this long loop serves a function so the nephrons the blood vessels will normally surround them this has been stripped just so you can see but the blood vessels will normally surround them from the part that's coming down and going back out the essential function that's just important to know is that the kidney filters here filters here and like I said based on size fluid and nutrients come and there's a lot of excess that comes into the loops of kidney so first it starts by reabsorbing a lot of that excess you can see here glucose amino acids which are the smallest um building bricks of proteins vitamins lactic acid electrolyte sodium potassium all of that 
and anywhere that sodium goes water follows anywhere that salt goes water follows so a lot like 90 percent is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule and you start coming down you've gotten most of your sodium out yes yeah um you begin to secrete some things back like okay the body is sensing okay what is left we don't have enough um we still have extra urea in the body they're getting rid of urea urea is like a byproduct of um protein metabolism get that out um uric acid for those who have gout i've heard this a number of times and they're giving you medications to increase you getting being able to get rid of uric acid these are the places that those drugs work and as you are going down you're absorbing water so remember when i talked about the long loop when your body is dehydrated and you are really needing to conserve water, the long loop is very useful because that he, that place can independently reabsorb water without necessarily reabsorbing sodium. And then, so we've talked about filtration, we've talked about reabsorption, secretion. The body secreting things it really, really wants to get rid of. So urea here, it's secreting urea as you go up a depending on how your body's feeling if it feels like oh there's too much water there's too much sodium it secretes sodium um it reabsorbs so it reabsorbs sodium here again sorry the the arrow is going out so it's still reabsorbing bicarb again all of this is dependent on what your blood levels are and as you are coming down now you're now secreting hydrogen ion which forms the base for uh, which forms acid potassium ammonia back and as you're coming down these collecting tubules also go down and these ones are the ones that now um go out and form the big urinary tract and here also water can be reabsorbed if you are really really desperate for more water so this is just all right thank you for tuning in um to today's episode talking about the urinary system so now um we hope that you are getting a hang of things because we want to share how normal things happen and structured so that when things go wrong we can be able to pinpoint and have an idea of how where and when things are going wrong so stay stay tuned um to next week's episode where we'll be talking about the endocrine system um send us your questions share your thoughts let us know how um if you're enjoying the content and if it's um you know really impacting you uh before we go please make sure you like this uh video subscribe to our channel make sure um you follow us on our other social media handles um share this video with your family and friends on your social media handle the links are below in the description i am for lake lawal till next time on doodles empty bye